time travel and mind control. Right. Could you share that with the audience? Of course, to me, that was very titillating, if you would. Uh, well, uh, mind control is an extremely dangerous topic, so I'm going to try and shy away from describing it as much as I can. Just send me uh, the instructions in an email. That's all you have to do. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> well, mind control is uh, fine when you do it to yourself. Uh, if you're doing it to somebody else, then it becomes dangerous. And if it's voluntary, then it's it can be a teacher-student relationship, and it can be theoretically official to some extent. Uh, but or therapy, it, it, hypnotherapy, meditation kind of, yeah. Of course, of course. And yeah, if you're doing it to yourself, it's acceptable. It's like binaural beats or whatever you want to use to practice. So yeah, uh, if, if one is uh, able to use mind control, so to speak, over their own mind, metaprogram their own uh, consciousness, then one can uh, regulate their own circadian rhythms and in this way have some kind of uh, at least theoretical influence on the rhythms of the uh, natural environmental uh, surroundings uh, around a person. Which, of course, is like uh, almost a uh, superstition of transference means of uh, looking at uh, the subjectivity of how we perceive time. So like if, if I'm having fun, uh, then time is going to fly. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not having fun, then time's just going to drag and it's going to be boring. But uh, theoretically, uh, if if I were to use mind control and force myself to have fun, then I could force time to move faster from my own perspective, uh, or at least trick myself into thinking that it was doing so. And likewise, uh, the opposite. <clears throat> 